Hey everybody, it's Al with Bobcad. So today I wanted to talk about project curves. It's one of our mill professional tool paths. Uh, you can use it for a variety of different uh, methods, it's, it, uh, uh, methods and applications. I mean, it's it's a very versatile um, tool path. I really like it. Gives me a uh, very clean tool motion. Uh, very usable for a lot of different scenarios. In this case, I'm using text, but in no way is this tool path limited to text. Uh, it's a projection tool path, and we're going to get right into uh, how to create this part that we have here. Uh, we've mirrored some text, we put some text along a curve, I got some tricks for you there, and then also we're just uh, machining this text down into this uh, revolve surface here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to create a, uh, a new job. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create the revolved profile. Okay, so uh, we, when you're in Bobcad, when you're drawing, by default you're in the top plane or top UCS, which you'll see right here. In this case, I want to go to a front UCS, and when I go to that front UCS, I'll also change my view, so I'm looking down on it from above, but really I'm in a front view. Now in this case, I... Um, I know a lot of times I don't go through the steps that I take to draw some of the wireframe, but this is the wireframe that I've drawn. Let me go ahead and uh, copy this, and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and paste it over here. All right, so basically, to draw this shape, um, you know, I what I what I really did is I drew a, a rectangle from the top left to find... Uh, a y value defined in x value okay so that's what I did now I don't have a print or anything to work off of so I um, you know just created a profile so the profile went something along the lines of line continuous and you know something like this to this to this to that okay it was something along these lines and then I came in and I did a fillet you know between here and here and then I did another fillet between here and here you know um, maybe another fillet between there and there and there and there and that's you know essentially um, essentially how I created this profile so you know if I had a print or something with more dimensions generally I would do parallel lines you know and find my intersections and then add in my fillets okay so for this example I'm gonna just uh, go back to this file here so we have this profile so now that I have this profile drawn in this plane I'll go back to my top view and uh, I'm just gonna create a new layer I'll make it active and I'm gonna revolve this uh, I'm gonna revolve this uh, shape here okay so to revolve it I'll go to surface revolve pick axis 360 shift left click spacebar left click spacebar okay cancel all right so <laughs> that gives me uh, gives me my revolve surface I'm gonna turn off my other geometry I'm also gonna change the color of this because I want it to be a gray which seems to be my new color that I like alright so this gives me my my surface now that that's step one so the first thing that I had done over here let me blank this out is I created that uh, model now the next thing the next thing that I did is I created this text okay so you know the way that this works is uh, I'm gonna I'm going to add another layer here. I'm going to do arc coordinates and I'm going to create a radius that would represent the where the bottom of the letters would be. Okay, so this works fine. We'll throw that up there. Now from here, I'm going to break this radius in half. Let's see if that yeah. Okay, so I'm going to break it in half so I'm only driving the letters along this curve here. Okay? The next thing I'm going to do is create some text. So this is going to be Bobcad. Uh, it will make it a half inch. And I'll go ahead and choose OK and I'll place it on the screen. Now, one of the things that you may or may not know is if you still have text on the screen, you can 
click on the text and do entity modify and then you can adjust that text okay so maybe I want this to be a little bit larger um, you know I can add some spacing between the letters and then as far as the the font goes let me see much I'm not sure which one I picked, but let's go with uh, let's go with this one. Okay, all right. So now we have Bobcat. Now, what I want to do from here is I want to put this text along this curve. So I'm going to go to Text, Fit Text to Curve, Center, select my text, Spacebar, select my curve, and that puts my text along the curve. Okay, so that brings us that much closer to the process. Just like we have the text along the curve here, I have the text along the curve here. Now the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to create another layer. I'm going to select the text. I'm going to copy it. Then I'm going to turn off that layer and then I'm going to paste the text. Okay, now the reason why I do this is I, in, in order to mirror this text, we need to mirror this text. So in order to mirror it, I'm going to I'm going to explode uh, the geometry and what that does is it takes it from an image and turns it into lines or arcs okay so that's that's one thing that I'm gonna do alright so and the other the reason why I put it on another layer is if I want to go back to this layer and let's say I want to modify that text I can select it and go to entity modify and now I could make them slightly bigger um, I could also make the text uh, smaller uh, so I have some adjustments still because I still have it as a text. As soon as I explode it, then it's no longer text, and then I kind of work with what I have. So that's why that's why I'll uh, do this. Um, I think you can even get away with changing the letters. We may not. Um, it may just take that one letter off. Yeah, um, we may actually uh, may, uh, set up the geometry so that. Uh, it's before we wrapped it to the text as well, or uh, wrapped it to the curve, uh, so that way we can go back and have full editing capabilities. But that's just um, just a step that you can take that can help you if you think you may need to be modifying the geometry, okay? Or in this case, the text. Now we now that we have the text here, the next thing that I want to do is I want to mirror this. So I'm going to just choose mirror. I'm going to select my text, and I'm going to mirror it right like that. And there we go. So that gives us our text. And then we also have our stock. So we're pretty close here to getting this going. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I want to create a job. So we're going to do new job, milling job. We're going to run our stock wizard. In this case, we're going to choose a solid model. Uh, so that's our stock. And then we'll leave our zero on center. That's just fine. And then we'll go ahead and blank this out. Okay. So now we want to take our text here. And... Um, we're ready to set up our three axis toolpath. So we'll come in here. This is mill three axis. Select our geometry. This is going to be the solid model. Um, we'll select, I'm just hitting select all and then space bar. Then we're going to choose next. Um, we're going to go to the machining strategy and this is project curves. Okay. Under project curves, we're going to give it our tool diameter. Okay. So we got that set up. Uh, we're gonna pro we're gonna pick our project curves, which is gonna be our text here. So we'll grab that right there, and then from here we're just gonna advance through, and let's go ahead and compute this. Now, in a lot of cases with clients that I've I've spoken with, this is the extent of what they use project curves for. Is they'll project it down onto the surface, but they may or may not realize that you can actually remove material from within that boundary. You can pocket it out, and you can use this in all kinds of uh, applications, tooling, engraving, etc. So, how do we do that? Well, let's go back to the feature, and we're going to go to patterns. And then instead of user define, we're going to use an offset. Okay. So with the offset, we're going to set number of cuts. And then when we go to the next page, we're going to set what our uh, step over amount may be. Okay. I'm also going to drop down the tolerance uh, for this example, and I'll recompute. Now you can see when we when we do that, now we're getting more than one pass for these areas here. See how we're it's it's like a pocketing routine, and the way that this works is it will trim out extra cuts. So I have 20 cuts, but I'm only taking uh, 50 thou. It'll trim out the uh, 
the cuts that that aren't there. As I drop down the step over, you see that it does a, a much closer and a better job cleaning this up, and we can continue to do that until we get it refined the way that we want. Now, the other thing to remember, too, is that this is projected down onto the surface, and because we want to engrave into the surface, we need to adjust for that. So we'll come back into here under parameters, and for our tolerance, we'll just give it a negative allowance. Okay, with this negative allowance, now we're going to machine down into the surface, and that will get you a really clean and uh, useful tool path for uh, machining these types of shapes. It looks like there's some gaps. If you see, there's some gaps in here. So what I want to do is just make sure I have the right number of cuts. So we'll make this 25, and uh, let's recompute. Let's see if that doesn't clean them up. So let's adjust our step over slightly because we want to make sure that we have a nice, um, a nice, uh, nice clean tool path in those areas. And that definitely looks better now. Okay. So, and you can work with those adjustments. And again, this could be, it doesn't have to be text. It could be a logo. It could be some kind of graphics. Uh, we could be machining the, the floor of a, a mold. I mean, there, there's lots of applications for it, but those are the steps for using the project curves. We'll go ahead and run this through a simulation. see this go through. Uh, hopefully you guys found this video to be uh, useful. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, uh, please reply back to the Facebook, the YouTube, or whatever thread this video may be posted in. Uh, if you like this video and you'd like to see more, uh, make sure to give us a thumbs up and uh, comment on YouTube. Um, I'll be sure to uh, look out for all our comments there. Other than that, uh, I'll leave you with the simulation, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon.